Things for Adventures. I'm Karen Ahmed. I'm really excited today because we're making risois. Now this is a traditional Portuguese snack. It's made with a semi-cooked dough and it's filled with shrimp and cheese. It's truly delectable. Now this recipe was brought down by the Portuguese to Goa and it's made in many a Goan household today. What I love about this recipe is that you can make a large batch and you can freeze it. And I love to make this ahead of the holiday season so you can have this on hand anytime you have unexpected guests. Recently, I attended Audra's cooking school and I learned how to make this delicious snack and also many other delectable Goan delicacies. Before I go any further with this recipe, because I know you're dying to know how to make this, do make sure you subscribe to my channel. I upload new videos every week. Also, make sure to ring the bell. That's YouTube's new bell icon that will notify you every time I upload a new video. Now, let's get started. Let's start with two tablespoons of butter. I'm just going to melt this down and I'm going to throw in seven ounces. That's about 200 grams of shelled and deveined shrimp. Just note that I've weighed these after I've removed the shell. The butter is going to impart a wonderful flavor and the heat is going to cook the shrimp just enough to make it sturdy enough to mince. When these are pink on both sides, I'm going to just remove these and leave them aside to cool. I'm now going to cut these shrimp till I have a fine to medium dice. In a saute pan, heat two tablespoons of butter and two tablespoons of olive oil. I'm just going to allow this butter to melt and I'm going to add one cup of finely diced onion. Allow this to sweat and saute just a little bit and I'm also going to add one tablespoon of minced garlic. Now this is going to add some great flavor and we know that garlic and shrimp is a match made in heaven. Now I'm gonna add the minced shrimp back in and I'm gonna mix it with the onion and garlic and allow it to pick up all of those amazing flavors. Next, I'm going to add a half cup of milk and a few tablespoons of that shrimp stock. Now I saved this when I sauteed the shrimp in butter earlier. There is so much flavor here that I'm not gonna let it go to waste. I'm going to allow this to come to the boil and then I'm going to add two tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm just going to add one tablespoon at a time and I'm going to incorporate well to make sure that the mixture is nice and thick. I'm now going to turn the heat off and I'm going to add a teaspoon of dried parsley. Now you can add fresh if you like. I'm adding parsley just for a little hint of flavor and a little bit of color as well. I'm now just gonna wait till this mixture cools and then I'm going to add in one cup of grated cheese. I'm using a mixture of white and regular cheddar. Fold this in. Now, if you wondered why I didn't add salt before, it's because sometimes some types of cheese are very, very salty. So I'm just going to taste it now and I'm going to add salt to taste. I'm now going to remove this and I'm going to transfer this into two containers for two reasons. One, they're going to cool a lot faster and two, I want to keep them as cold as possible by reducing the time I keep opening and closing the lids. Store this in your fridge for about four to six hours. You wanna make sure that your mixture is really nice and cool. It's best to work with this mixture when it's nice and cool. You can even plan to make this filling one to two days ahead. Now it's time to make the dough. Now this is a partially cooked dough and you need to work really, really fast with it. I'm going to be working in two batches with the dough since it's easier to work with a smaller amount. In a saute pan, I'm going to heat one cup of water and I'm going to add two tablespoons of butter and one teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to allow this to come to a simmer. Mix this and dump in one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Turn the heat off and mix vigorously. Now you're probably thinking, oh my God, this looks so bad. This is a total mistake. Don't worry, just turn this onto your kneading surface and I want to knead it now, but it's super, super hot. So I'm just going to grab some cling film to protect my hands and I'm going to knead the dough till it's nice and smooth. Once it's hot but bearable, I'm going to remove the cling film and I'm going to 
keep kneading. Now remember how terrible this dough looked before. It comes together really quickly. The heat and the moisture just distributes evenly and you land up with a really nice supple dough. Now I'm just going to cut this at half and I want to keep the other half warm as I'm working on the first half. So I'm just going to cover it with cling film and I'm going to return it to the warm pot just so it stays nice and warm. Now you're gonna prep everything before you start rolling. I've got a rolling pin here, I've got some extra flour and some cookie cutters. Now the cutter size is going to define how many resoys you get. My bigger cutter is about six and a half centimeters and my smaller one is 5.5 centimeters. I'm just going to use the bigger one today. Sometimes I like to use the smaller one if I'm making bite-sized risois. But this one at six and a half centimeters is actually the perfect size. I'm going to flour my board and I'm going to roll out the dough. Now, unlike a roti dough, you don't flip the dough back and forth. You're only going to roll on one side. Keep rolling this till it's nice and thin. If you find that the dough is sticking to your rolling pin, add a little bit of flour. I'm going to use my cookie cutter now. I'm going to cut rounds and I'm going to keep them aside. Now, I do want to re-roll the dough, but I'm going to mix it with some of that warm dough and I'm going to roll it out again. Cut the shapes again and use the last bit of dough and just keep going. I'm going to keep rolling this dough until I have all of my dough rolled and cut. Like I mentioned before, I'm going to make this dough in two batches. I've already completed the first batch and I'm quickly going to work on the second batch. I'm going to repeat the process as I did before. You should get about 50 to 55 rounds of dough. Now it's time to fill them. I'm just going to move all these cut circles somewhere else and working with eight at a time, I'm just going to lay them down and I'm going to take some of that filling from the fridge and I'm going to put the rest back into the fridge. Remember I told you I want to make sure that this filling stays as cold as possible. Using two teaspoons, I'm just going to add about a half teaspoon of the filling to the center of each circle of dough. I love to use an inexpensive brush to brush water all around the edge to seal. And I like to pinch it first at the top and then on the two ends. I find that this way the filling does not run out. Make sure the resoys are well sealed. I'm going to keep going till all of the resoys are filled. Now it's time for the final step. In one bowl, I have some beaten egg and in the other bowl, I have a half cup of breadcrumbs and a half cup of semolina. I love to mix breadcrumbs and semolina as this gives the risois a really lovely texture. Now using your two hands, you wanna make sure you keep one hand exclusively for each bowl. Take the risois, tip it in the egg and then with the other hand, I'm gonna cover it with the breadcrumbs and I'm gonna leave it aside. Keep doing this till you have a whole sheet of risois.
Once you've filled one tray, I'm going to stick this into my freezer and keep going. As you complete the next layer, just stack them in your freezer. Once your resources are frozen, they can be bagged. To cook, I like to defrost this for about 15 to 20 minutes on some kitchen towel and then I just like to immerse this in some hot oil and fry it till it's golden brown and then drain it on some kitchen towel. Make sure your oil isn't super hot so the outside doesn't get too dark too quick. You want to make sure that this resource heats all the way through. One of the things I love about this recipe is that you can make a really large batch ahead of time and you have these beauties on hand anytime you have a party or last minute guests. Traditionally, this is served with plain old ketchup and it makes a great snack or appetizer. Thank you so much for joining me on Cravings Food Adventures. Thank you, Joachim and Audra, for sharing this recipe with me and also inviting me into your home to learn how to make this very traditional snack. Make sure that you're subscribed to my channel, guys. I upload new videos every week. So do make sure that you're subscribed. Also share my channel and my videos with your family and friends. I'm this close to hitting 20,000 subscribers. So please help me get there. Also ring the bell, that's YouTube's new bell icon. That will notify you every time I upload a new video. And the fun doesn't stop there. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and even Snapchat. Till I see you next time. Take care, guys. Bye.